Hello, and welcome to the second video in our introduction to mobile arms. In this video, we're going to be talking about building your frames and setting up for a game. As we mentioned in the introduction video, players will construct their own frames from the ground up using a combination of blueprint cards and upgrade cards, allowing them to tackle skirmishes precisely how they desire. Let's talk a little bit more about those details. Blueprint cards are core cards that dictate the size, armor, and utility of each frame. Players are free to choose how big or small the frame is, provided they abide by the overall tonnage limit. Every frame in Mobile Arms is based on a 60mm base, so as long as your model fits on that, you're good to play with it. There are three main frame sizes. A light frame is 2 tons, a medium frame is 3, and a heavy frame is 4. The tonnage limit for a standard skirmish game is 9 tons. Players can build any combination of light, medium, and heavy frames, resulting in mercenary bands of 2 to 4 bespoke frames per player. A frame's construction consists of a mobility card and multiple module cards. Each module card consumes a set amount of your frame's hard points and charge, as listed on the frame's blueprint. And as long as you do not go over either of these two values, you are free to attach any combination of upgrade modules you like to your frame. A mobility card is attached to the bottom of your frame's blueprint card and dictates the distance your frame can move depending on the mobility action it decides to perform. Unlike module cards, you are limited to one mobility card per frame. Some mobility card options consume no charge, while others may siphon a small amount of power. This card-based system allows you to mix and match the frame's loadout to best suit your playstyle, while still allowing you to quickly change things up between games. Now that we've talked about how to build out our frames, let's take a closer look at how to set up for a game of Mobile Arms. Since Mobile Arms is scaled for 28 to 32 mm humans and takes place on a myriad of worlds in our solar system, any 28 mm terrain can be used. In general, we suggest using plenty of line-of-sight blocking items, but more scenic locations like deserts or forests are also just as viable. Once players have constructed their forces and set up a table, the Zone of Operations is established. This is done by placing a Zone of Operations token in the center of the playing space. The Zone of Operations token is used for deployment, as well as some scenario-specific objectives. Mobile Arms uses custom measuring widgets for movement and ranges, and players' first use of them will be utilizing the long widget to deploy their frames two long links away from the zone of operations in opposite quadrants. These two links can be hinged up to 90 degrees, so players will have many options for strategic placement. The flexibility of deployment and setup makes Mobile Arms suited to a wide variety of table shapes and sizes. In a standard game, once players have deployed their frames, four point of interest tokens are then placed in each zone of operations quadrant. Each point of interest is placed at least one long length away from the Zone of Operations token and one long length away from each other point of interest. How players interact with these point of interest tokens will be laid out by the specific scenarios being played, as well as the contracts on the tables for each player. After each player has constructed and deployed their frames, then place the point of interest tokens, the game begins. Our next video will give a more detailed look at gameplay activation, combat, and the ever-important vent cycle present in a game of Mobile Arms. The Mobile Arms Endless Destiny Backroom event launches on August 22nd. Keep an eye on our socials and stay tuned for more videos and news as we prepare to enter Corey Sullivan's new world.